Australians all let us rejoice, for we are young and free. We've golden soil and wealth for toil, our home is girth by sea. A land abounds in nature's gifts, of beauty rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, then let us sing, advance Australia fair. The majestic beauty of our land, its frailty so easily exposed. Crops inundated by floods and starved by drought, farmers wondering what to sow. The beauty of our coastal plains and our coral reefs diversity, whispering their bittersweet swan song to our nation so poignantly. A story of unrelenting turmoil and tragedy, unlistening, unheard, unrecognised, affected by this new and terrible reality. The imperceptible creeping rise of H2O, its higher tides and storm surges with its urges to wash away all signs of our humanity while we struggle to see the impending calamity as it lurches ever closer. The harsh price we pay with weather patterns taking no pity on us damaged lands, our bedraggled homes pummeled by downpours and blight, our browning lawns gasping, eking out paltry vapours as they fight for their very survival. We stare on in false ecstasy with false bravado at our lucky country with idle chatter and polite social conversation. We fixate on investment of house prices with all their fallacies, choosing to ignore the elephant trumpeting in our room. Can you not see Caesar? Rome is burning. We stare on, our gaze is carefully ignoring that which is in front of our eyes like lobsters in a pot, frozen, oblivious to our impending culinary demise and odeur to be quickly nibbled, digested, and our remains to be cast aside. Why so much apathy to this danger? The signals clearly in front of our eyes. How big do the billboards need to be to be recognized? Do the neon lights need to be flashing, the foghorns blaring? What can we surmise? What will it take for us to stumble off the couch, stumbling as if drunk with bleary eyes, with uncertainty, with sweaty bodies fattened by inaction, with little consensus off the right path, with trepidation and meditation, but now with conviction, be brave, suck it in, we will enter the fray. Lead on, Macduff, lead on. Are we dare frozen by some blinding headlight? Is our political system too broken, too focused on sand bites that have no might? Are media chasing headline stories of vacuous celebrities that amount only to a pregnant pause? Are scientists shouting in the wilderness, their voices drowned out, not finding a voice that can be heard, not finding a connection to the greater cause? In this desert, do we simply bury our heads in the sand? Is the problem too large for us to understand? So do we shrug our shoulders and continue on our way? Do we have the power and wherewithal to stay, to fight? Are we delegating our responsibility, believing that a higher power would be our salvation? That there will be no need for consternation? That the mighty Lord in his relevations will save us from our flaws? Is that our mitigation? But just in case, can we not in our busy lives simply take a moment to inhale, close our eyes, listen, pause? Do we not feel some foreboding? A faint tingling in our bodies, the tip of our tongue, our second sense. If we strain our eyes, do we not see the shadows lurking? How do we tear away a popcorn generation, one weaned on the teat? That is our fixation, a Facebook generation that will pout, take a pic and share their devotion, hungry counting their ephemeral adulation, and a commitment so slight that as a wispy breeze it simply ends with a light. How do we put a stop to mind-numbing activity? How do we shift our gaze to the fore to help us realize that the world's fuse has been lit, that this may lead to a moment, a moment that leaves the world with no option, no option but to eject us, eject us while our species, our species that is still in its infancy, a not-so-innocent baby in arms snuffed out before its legacy has even begun? How do we wake up a generation from its slumber that it is being led by a joker, an orange pied piper, a ludicrous New Yorker, perhaps to our eventual elimination, to shake man, woman and child from their complacency to show them it is not too late, that we can crawl to the starting gate, and that we through many small steps walk the talk with conviction, and then as a nation our future generations will be ready to run at the problem head on, tempered by experience, and armed with the knowledge that there is no one else, that we have gifted them this world, this problem to solve in our shame, for there is no one else to blame. I hope not too late. There is hope.
Can we use technology effectively to connect emotionally, to tear the bleary-eyed from their stupor with tools to hook them, not with far-fetched fantasy, but to show them the effects of climate change now to the hometowns, communities and families, with tools that let them see the impact firsthand, that tell a story they can understand, to open their eyes and digest a future chapter to be written, from that dusty book, you know, that book that they never picked up from the library, in a lonely corner. What's it called? Ah, yes, that's the section. That's called nonfiction. With attention hooked, can we take the protagonist on their life journey? The ups and downs, can we show them the bigger picture, the impact of inaction, not simply to the economy, but life itself, in all its glory, on a knife edge? And in that cutting moment, which way will it fall? Can we help guide? its sway? Can we show them how the lack of environment policy, not demanding we answer the hard question, guys, wicked problems to be solved? Can you put data in their hands, help them with a crossword puzzle to make informed decisions for our land? Can we disintermediate the flow of information not controlled by faceless men of corporations who seek to profit from a status quo that cannot be maintained? Disintermediate? Those who want to hide and ignore the worst cases and those who seek to alarm of only worst cases allow people to understand, to understand the risks and take their own journey, allow them to tell their own story. Can one empowered with information, armed with knowledge, for with knowledge comes enlightenment? Can one build a sense of urgency and with conviction to follow it to its bitter end? To be willing to make sacrifices on the way, a way that should have started yesterday and though we fear our fortune, let us believe, let us hope that it is not too late, that our pregnant pause has not sealed our fate, that we can get out of the starting gate. Let us embark on our journey, on its twisted and turning path that will require some radical change. We must remember to be resilient, to be tenacious, not to give up hope. We must realize that to run, we must first walk, to walk, we must first crawl, to crawl, we must first know why. In our youth and freedom, to rejoice, to be free, our history's gaze will require that we toil. Nature's gifts are waiting, and through our strains, we will rebuild our lucky country, and we will sing, we will advance Australia fair.